Often phrases like giant killer or high-end killer is used to depict affordable products that can't compete with high-end products to some degree. But there's always a catch. It's either the quality materials or the base extension is not as good, but the mid-range and the high frequency can compete. So usually it's not really a giant killer or a threat to high-end products. However, today, I'm about to introduce to you something that is truly a giant killer. Meet the Arendel 1723 THX speakers. Now these are a true giant in its class. And I'm wearing this jacket right here because it is giving me the chills. This speaker is truly a high-end speaker in every regard possible. And let me tell you, this speaker is none like the other affordable products I have reviewed on this channel. Arendo as a company is an astonishing company that has put a lot of time and effort into making a high-end product. They really didn't skip on the quality materials or set up instructions. In fact, if you read a manual for their speakers, it is very extensive on how you should set it up and what you would expect from those setups. In fact, Arendo uses metal and quality parts on the speaker, even if it's not required for performance alone, to make sure that you are getting the top-notch speaker that you deserve. And for the price they're asking, which is $3,700, it is truly remarkable of a speaker. And that includes shipping to your door and a 60-day in-home trial plus a 10-year warranty. So they are very confident in their product, and rightfully so. Starting right off with the build quality alone, this speaker is not falling behind at all and competes head-to-head -head with high-end products. In such a big tower speaker in this price category, you would expect some type of a little bit of a flimsy material or at least MDF in a cabinet of this size. But no, they are using HDF, which is a high density board and high quality cabinet material that is usually used in much more expensive speaker designs. This married with proper bracing inside the cabinet allows this cabinet to be extremely inert and free from unwanted cabinet resonances. The binding post is no exception to quality. It uses rhodium-plated copper terminals, which can be found in much more expensive speaker designs, and usually not even those speakers have this type of binding quality. Now the feet looks a little bit cheap, but the material itself is not. It is in fact made out of high quality steel bars and premium spikes to hold this gigantic heavy speaker. And I don't have it personally on, but the speakers do come with magnetic grills. Thank you. Magnetic grills are a requirement now that we're in 2022. No more of those old fashioned grills, please. The speaker itself is a 2.5 way design using four eight inch woofers and a one inch or 28 millimeters soft dome tweeter with a really nice waveguide, but more on that in the later part of this video. The cool thing about these Arendo drivers are that it's not off the shelf drivers, but all made for Arendo specifically to meet their requirements. In fact, Arendo emphasizes that their drivers are very high quality and they did not skimp out on the quality of the drivers. The back of the speaker has three ports, which by the way, that's a lot of ports. You may think that this speaker is room sensitive because of those ports in the back, but Arendo gives you many options in terms of setup and this is a very well-tuned design, keeping in mind of room responses. In fact, Arendo doesn't rely heavily on just measurements, but also listening tests as well. This is a proper company doing proper testing and you can see the measurements they posted on their website specifying exactly what their speakers measure and how they derived to that measurement. In my books, Arendo is a bit of a perfectionist company and you can really see it in their speaker design, especially the sensitivity of the speaker. While the speaker may be a gigantic speaker with a nominal 4 ohm impedance, the sensitivity of the speaker is 92 dB and that allows the speaker to be very flexible in terms of drivability, allowing it to be driven with a variety of different gear from receiver to a very low wattage tube power amplifier like my Wilsonton 
R300 that I reviewed just recently. In fact, I had huge success with these speakers with multiple different types of gear and not once did the speaker sound bad with any of them. But coming back to the port design in the back, it has three ports and it comes with three different port plugs that fits perfectly into the port behind the speakers. You can decide to plug all three of them for a completely sealed design, which gives you the least amount of bass extension on the speaker, around 55 Hertz plus minus 3 dB, according to Orendo. However, it gives you the most pleasant bass roll off that sealed designs are known for, and the sum of the audio files, including myself, may find the Orendos quicker in bass and cleaner with a pleasant roll off frequency in small to medium sized rooms on the speaker. You can choose to plug in one port and that was my personal favorite. This gives you lowest extension in bass, but still a very good roll off frequency. You can choose to plug two of them and allowing just one port to be free. This gives you the lowest bass extension on the speaker, but behold, if you crank it up too high, you may run into port noises as Orendo depicted. Personally, in my room, I did not run into port noises with the speaker, even with just one port open. However, my personal favorite was plugging just one port in the middle and allowing two ports, bottom and top, to be open. Don't ask me why, that is what I preferred in my room. It seemed to give me the lowest bass extension while being smooth and linear at the same time with great punch and body to the sound, which I really appreciated more than the other options available with the speaker in terms of port plugging. And yes, I experimented and personally, I liked it best when I plugged the middle port instead of any other ports. Just personal preference. Aside from that, I've tried multiple different positioning on the speaker and my favorite was having the speakers just with a slight, slightest bit of toe-in to allow for that center imaging to come snapping together right in the middle. And this allows you to have really good focus down in the middle and great separation and imaging to the side, to the middle, and having a wider and deep enough sound stage to please my personal preference. However, I do have to mention that this speaker, in terms of placement, is not sensitive whatsoever, despite the port in the back. Normally, when audiophiles, including myself, look at speakers with three ports in the back of the speaker, you may immediately think, oh, that speaker is going to be room sensitive and I have to have them out into the room like four or five feet. Not the case. In fact, I liked this speaker about two feet from the wall behind. And this allowed the speaker to have really nice linear extension while having great depth and sound staging. Now a little bit on sound staging though, the speaker is a floor standing speaker. Now I listen to bookshelf speakers daily in this system and I've reviewed a lot of bookshelf speakers in the past and bookshelf speakers have really nice sound staging wide and deep naturally. And this speaker simply doesn't have that kind of degree of sound staging even if I tow these speakers out towards the room and open up that sound stage. Now when I do tow these speakers out into the room, meaning no tow in whatsoever, then yes, I do get a little bit more sound staging, but the sound staging is quite limited and pretty intimate of an experience. Now, I wouldn't say it is so intimate to where everything seems focused right down in the middle, but I would say the sound staging is somewhat limited to the plane of the speakers, meaning you're gonna get sound staging where the speakers are, not past it. However, remember how I said the speaker is 92 dB in sensitivity and an easy to drive speaker. This allows the speaker to have many different possibilities and opens a venue to the world of tubes. And when I paired up several tube amplifiers, including my vintage Dynaco SD70, the Wilsonton R300 that I just reviewed, that's eight watts in power, and the Fluxion tube amplifier made in Canada, I have to say that this speaker is simply amazing match with some of the tube amplifiers if you want more sound staging. It transformed the speakers and really the complaint about sound staging goes away in an instant with holographic sound staging everywhere just enveloping you wide, deep, and just glorious. While bass may be more quicker, tighter, and more impactful with solid states like my Denafrips Thalo or the Gatto monoblocks that I have here, but personally speaking, I would say that I would trade that a little bit of a tighter bass for sound staging in a heartbeat. And that's because this speaker naturally has really good bass extension even with tube amplifiers, and I really don't feel the need for a solid state amplifier to tighten up the bass or help out with the bass in that way. 
However, if you find that solid state is your thing and you want the quickest and the cleanest sound out of these speakers, then my personal favorite was the Benchmark AHP2 Monoblox or in stereo configuration, as that is simply the best pairing I've heard with solid state amplifiers with the speaker, allowing for beautiful extension, punch, dynamics, and expression of the speaker to just come alive with reasonable sound staging, not as big as tube amplifiers, but reasonable enough to where I say, I can live with it. But my personal favorite had to be the new Vincent integrated amplifier. Now this was a little bit of a educational guess. I thought to myself, well, I really like the solid state presentation, but at the same time, I really also like the tube magic with these speakers opening up the sound stage. So why not a hybrid? Yes, indeed, the Vincent integrated amplifier here is a hybrid, kind of combining best of the both worlds. And personally for me, that was the best match because it opened up the sound stage like a tube amplifier would, not as wide or deep as a full on tube amplifier, but just enough to where I felt like the speaker had really good sound staging in depth to my satisfaction, while having really nice bass extension, grip, and punch and dynamics like a solid state amplifier. So best of both worlds. And to make matters better, this integrated amplifier has tone control which becomes really, really valuable if you think about it, because if you have a speaker in a smallish room or in a uh, non-treated room, then maybe the speaker could be a little bit boomy or too much in the bass region. Well, worry no more. If you have the Vincent, you can just turn down the bass a little bit and have the perfect linear bass extension in any room. The review for the Vincent integrated amplifier is coming soon, so I won't spoil it too much. I feel like I've already spoiled it too much but the price point is around $3,000, which is absolutely not bad at all for a speaker around this price range. In fact, I would say it's a perfect marriage and a perfect synergistic match that I highly, highly recommend. Now for the sound quality. This speaker extends low. I mean, like 30 Hertz flat in my room kind of low. I don't feel like I need a subwoofer with this speaker. It is as a size adjusts. It has the scale and the dynamics of a big loud speaker. And I must say, right before I heard this speaker, uh, I actually visited my old workplace, Audio Excellence, and heard a pair of the Wilson Sabrina X that I'm very familiar with already, but I got to rehear it. What? Holy cow, there's a camera there. <laughs> Is that Jay Lee? <laughs> it's DV Leap. Oh, with a V. Yes. Hey, Christian. This guy Hello, is trouble. Bob. How are you doing? You are trouble. Look at you. What do you think about these? The classic Alnick um, A6000. That takes me back to when I was a little boy sitting in the crib and my mother used to play these for me. You know, this is going on YouTube, right? <laughs> and I came back home and I set up these speakers and I listened to them and my God, the similarity is so close, so close that I feel like Wilson Audio should be afraid. And I don't say that lightly, but this speaker truly has that Wilson Audio sound, that American sound that a lot of people like. And of course, I'm not trying to degrade Wilson Audio. It's a respectable brand and it is one of my favorite speaker brands of all time. Wilson Audio Sabrinas are much smaller in footprint and is using much less drivers in, in terms of count than this speaker is. However, I must say it is scary close in terms of the dynamics and the contrast that this speaker brings to the table in comparison to even speakers that cost heaps amounts more. In fact, the first thing that stands out on the speaker is the dynamics. The bass extension is low for a speaker of the size you would expect that, but in this price category, it is a bit unheard of in terms of the quality of the bass. Of course, we've seen in the Polk R700 speakers, which is a big floor standard from the Reserve series that Polk released. And those speakers naturally have deep bass extension because of the sheer size and does have the scale and air movement. But this speaker has the quality, the texture, and the nuance, and the impact, the contrast in the bass. It has everything that I have looked for in a high-end bass performance. Now, if you remember my R700 review from Polk, I said that that speaker can compete with high 
high-end speakers in terms of the bass extension and slam and air movement. However, it simply doesn't have the nuanced qualities in the bass as well as the mid-range and high-frequency quality is nowhere near high-end uh, speaker quality. And this statement, I still stand by. However, the Arendels is a different story. And of course, the Arendels cost more than the Pokar 700, and rightfully so, and you can tell in the quality of the mid-range and high frequency. This speaker truly does not, does not, I repeat, sacrifice quality in the mid-range and high frequency whatsoever. The mid-range is pretty linear with a slight bit of warmth. And if you add a tube amplifier or a, like a hybrid like I did, it really transfers that warmth and the qualities of the amplifier very, very well, allowing you to really enjoy whatever you plug into it. And that tells me that this speaker's mid-range is neutral and natural with great tonal characteristics that strikes a great balance between accuracy and enjoyment in my books. Any music I throw at this speaker in terms of the vocals or instruments, this speaker recreates it to perfection in the mid-range. I have nothing to complain about the mid-range, the contrast, the layering, the placement in the imaging and the sound staging in the mid-range is just absolutely astonishing and definitely competes with high-end speakers. The high frequency is no exception on the speaker. It is of the highest degree and best high frequency I have heard in this price category or anywhere else. In fact, this type of high frequency quality is something that I would hear in a maybe a high quality small bookshelf speaker that costs as much as this entire speaker. Meaning the snap, the sweetness of this high frequency that I mentioned in my previous tube amplifier review is unmatched. In fact, I like the high frequency presentation of this speaker even more than Wilson Audio's, Magicals, Focals, you name it. And that's personal preference, but the sweetness the, the tingle, the perfect balance in brightness for my ears, never fatiguing yet has all the details and sweetness and the Im impressive factor in the high frequency that just floats in the air. Last time I heard this type of sweetness and high frequency uh, air airiness that I call the sparkle and the floaty effect was in the ELAC Vela 403 speakers. Now those speakers did not have much to say about the bass. It was a very quality bookshelf speaker using AMT tweeters to kind of give you that really nice dispersion and airy and sparkle and sweetness on the top end. And I, to this day, feel that the high frequency on the Vela is unmatched in terms of sweetness and airiness. However, the Orendos get it pretty darn close and it's using a soft dome tweeter. Now Orendo realizes that it is a floor standard and it does lack a little bit in sound staging. And you can tell if you read their manual because they tell you how to make the speakers sound you know, wider uh, in terms of sound staging by placing the speakers a little bit out towards the room. Now, the waveguide is the key factor into making that sound stage acceptable. Now, if, if without that waveguide, I'm not sure if the speaker will have the same degree of dispersion and sound staging and wide sweet spot that it has right now. So the waveguide allows the speaker to be a little bit more wider in sound stage and has those kind of tingle and sparkly effects that's floating in air. So the speaker definitely has air, sparkle, and nuance and uh, sweetness on the top end that I simply don't see in a lot of the floor standing speakers in this price category or anywhere else. And truly, I am not exaggerating. If sweetness is your thing and you want sweetness in your loudspeakers, this speaker with a Wilsonton R300 or 300B amplifier designs will give you a sweetness that you will just absolutely fall in love with. In fact, I've spent hours and hours just listening to this speaker outside of my own review period time that I've set for myself because simply I just could not turn off the music. And that is rare, especially for someone like me that listens to speakers of various different kinds every single day. You know it's a great speaker when you can't turn the music off. Now we all know that you like to crank up music loud, Jay, but how about in low volumes, medium volumes, and perhaps with poor recordings? 
And I have to say, this speaker is really good with poor recordings. It doesn't destroy poor recordings. Of course, it sounds better with better recordings, like all speakers do. But this speaker simply doesn't rip poor recording to shreds. In fact, I can go through multiple different poor recordings that I actually enjoy listening to and makes this it makes it sound better. The poor recordings sound less compressed, less, you know, shitty than if I were to plug it into some really high-end speakers that's really revealing. I would say the Arendels are revealing speakers, but not to a degree where it destroys poor recordings. Uh, in fact, that sweetness factor and the bass extension and over the, overall the fullness of the speaker, the scale really helps bring those poor recordings to life. And in terms of listening levels, yes, the speaker shines around medium to high level listening because that, that's where the bass really kicks in and really smacks you and punches you in the body. But even at low volumes, it may not punch you in the body, but you can definitely sense the low frequency extension and the overall linearity of the speaker. And most importantly, that sweetness factor, the sweetness, the, the sweet tingle, the beautiful high frequency is still existent at low listening levels as well, which is what I find important at low listening levels. Bass, of course, it's gonna get better when you crank it up, but high frequency, that's, that's a nice balance that you have to strike. And again, I truly mean that that right balance is hard to strike even for high-end companies, which is why often some people find some speakers bright compared to others and you know vice versa. So that fine balance between sweetness, revealing, that brightness level and the high frequency and refinement is something that you have to really use quality drivers, but also know how to work it in the crossover section. And just overall, the entire design has to be done right for that sweetness to come alive and the brightness to be just right for majority of listening levels as well as uh, music choices. So again, extremely well thought out design in terms of high frequency balance right there. And I really wouldn't have said this speaker is a true giant killer if it did not have the pounding bass and bass texture and quality, even with the sweetness, high frequency, and neutral mid-range. This speaker has it all. This speaker has it all, minus maybe the sound staging that you may find in maybe higher end designs. But does it lack in sound stage in a big way? No. And can you do something about it? Like add a tube amplifier to enlarge the sound stage to take care of that problem? Yes. So what do I have to complain about the speaker? I was personally a little bit skeptical of the Arendel's brand and the quality that it promises because uh, Arendel is a little bit more known in the home theater world than in the hi-fi realm. And so I expected good measured performance and a pretty neutral sound with good bass performance for a speaker this size but I didn't expect anything spectacular like this. This was certainly a surprise. In fact, for home theater purposes and music, this speaker is perfect. In fact, this speaker is THX certified, which means that it goes through 400 measurements and has to be approved and go through all this protocols to make sure it has those certifications of THX. Personally for me, THX certification, yes, it's cool, but what I personally find the coolest is the people behind Arendel and the quality assurance they stand behind. In fact, if you go on their website, it says, no Black Friday, we believe in quality. And so while I do like Black Friday sales, who doesn't, I have to say I am pretty impressed by Arendel's quality assurance and standing behind their product as good affordable product right off the bat instead of discounting all the time. I think this is a brand that stands behind their product's quality and gives it to the consumer world to us for whatever the lowest cost they possibly can right off the gate instead of playing any kind of games. Now, I personally haven't heard their other speakers, but I'm excited to try in the future. I think starting off with the highest offering they have was a bad choice because this definitely has spoiled me and gave me high expectations for their speaker designs. And lastly, please do not ask me to compare the speaker with speakers in the similar price ranges because simply my answer to you would be that this speaker is my favorite, personally speaking, personal preference. And by far my first recommendation when it comes to this price range and even above in a lot of regards. Like I said, this is one of the first products that's a floor standing speaker that I can truly call a true giant killer and I truly believe that. 
So that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please click that like button. It does help my channel out tremendously and it doesn't cost you anything. And I hope to see you guys in the future. Thank you for hearing my audio journey and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.